Hey, you guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm here again with Eddie. Yeah. Yes, and today what we're going to cover is the forehand swinging volley or the forehand top spin volley. Uh, and we're going to talk about technique, but also we're going to talk about when is a good time to use it. I hope you enjoy it. So here we go. All right, so we're going to take step by step. First things first, we want to be in our athletic position, knees bent, Paddle out in front, my chest is leaning in, it's leaning forward just a little bit. Now, when the ball comes towards my forehand, the first thing that I'm going to do is open up my paddle so my palm of my hand is actually facing the net. When I open the palm of my hand, I am dropping the head of the paddle below the ball because again, that ball that you're sending it to me is a third shot drop. So the ball is dropping below the net. When I drop the head of the paddle out in front of me, I'm then going to come under and keep my chest up, keep my head up and brush that ball and follow through and finish over my shoulder. So in a way it's very similar to when we talk about the ground stroke forehand. It's very similar except that we're cutting the stroke in half, meaning that I am not turning my body and I'm not taking my paddle back. I'm staying straight forward, hips are forward, knees bent out here. So it'll be one, two, three. Now, what makes that top spin? I do have, I do change my grip because again, this shot, I have time. So I go a little bit more to my semi-western because of the fact that I can, because the ball is coming as a third shot drop, I have that time to do it. So this is what it looks like. Nice. And I'm able to clear the net because I brushed the ball. Now, there you go. Perfect. Okay, so what happens with that ball? What do you what do you feel with that ball? Well, I mean, obviously it's coming at me hard, and it's it's you know it's really hard for me to be able to get there in time. It takes a lot of time away from me. Correct, and it's fast because it's got a ton of rotation. So when the ball bounces, it skids. Versus if I was to hit a flat ball, the top spin, the brushing under, generates rotation on the ball, which then if the ball bounces, that ball is going to skip and mm -hmm. then come into your body, making it much more difficult for you to be able to get a good drop again, you know, a fifth shot drop, for instance, it's much harder. So that's where, that's the time when I would try to keep you back because I'm taking time away by taking the ball out of the air. Yeah, it was much harder to be able to drop those balls. So they kept popping them up, putting them right in your sweet spot again. Correct, and we, we keep our positioning as the returning team, because again, I'm returning, coming in, I keep my position of, being aggressive and not allowing you to get in because it's much harder for you to drop a ball into the kitchen, right? Because again, that's because I'm taking the ball out of, t out of the air, taking time away from you. Some of the common errors that we see, so uh, Eddie, if I can get you there. So, so some of the things is that using the wrist a little too much to close the paddle. So, so when you hit, in, like what I want to happen is that wrist to lay back and then to brush and finish with the, this part of the paddle, the bottom part of the paddle facing up. It does not face to the side. So again, do it again. So it's a brush under and over. So that's what it looks like. Watch those toes, make sure you're not cheating in the <laughs> kitchen. Busted. There you go. So good student Addy is gonna drop the head of the paddle and brush, let's see. That's it. And again and brush good and brush good so one thing is that you don't have to come over this way either point the paddle down it can be to the side so drop drop the paddle yeah like that and then brush over let's do one more okay so what happened there yeah that's a common thing that yeah. we see that closing of the face going down so remember you want to follow through and finish over the shoulder just like that Good, and again, good. 
and again. Good. So again, that's the brush and that's it. So to me, it's, it's a simple stroke. However, we make it more complicated by trying to add wrist, which then we end up flicking it downward or we flick it upward. So it's a very, the wrist does lay back, but then it finishes over the shoulder, okay? I gotta generate it. That's it. Mm -hmm. So that's an example where I pull you out, then you hit the ball a little too deep, yep. not necessarily high, but a little too deep. Then I have a little bit of time and I'm able to brush that ball and bring it down, which then again, it doesn't give you time to come back and recover. So a lot of times what happens is that I hit that ball through the, the gap uh, because Eddie was pulled over. And a lot of people will then ask, oh, shouldn't this person then move over? Well, if this person does move over, it exposes their line. And then this is how I would use the ball down the line. So even if I do it, like I do that sometimes when the ball bounces, if I see that person coming over to cover for you, right, come over to the middle, then I'll brush that ball down the line. I hope you benefit from this video, learning how to hit a top spin volley or a swinging volley. And the time that you want to use it is when you have time. Uh, when somebody hits a third shot drop, uh, or another also example is when somebody hits a ball when you're in the kitchen and they kind of give you a little deeper ball and you have a little bit more time and then you can attack that ball. Mm -hmm.